Hi golfers, welcome to the Lower Your Handicap webinar. My name is Adam Young, I'll be taking you through the presentation. One of the biggest problems for amateur golfers is missing too many greens. The stats show that amateurs are more than 90% short of their target. The greens correlate very strongly with handicap, so there's even a formula out there that says 95 minus your greens in regulation times two would be a good indication of your score. So what that means is if you hit just two more greens, that could be four shots lower. The information that I will show you will get you hitting more greens in regulation than that. So here's a quick animation to prove that fact. If a golfer hits to the back of the green and another golfer hits short, the golfer who hits short will average 2.8 shots to get up and down from there. Whereas the golfer who's hit the back of the green, they may three putt occasionally, but they'll average 2.2 shots to get up and down. So that's 0.6 shots saved just by hitting the green. I'm sure we've all done this. It's horrible, it's embarrassing. Maybe we're not striking that poorly, but everybody throws a few duffs in. Everybody can benefit from striking the ball better. So what are the keys to better ball striking? Hitting the sweet spot is one of them. Here's one of my old clubs that I used to practice with as a junior. You can see that sweet spot is completely worn down. Striking the face is so important, especially when it comes to the driver. Lots of players are inconsistent with their driver. Now, if you misstrike the ball with a driver or a bigger headed club, the club will twist as you can see in this image here. So if the club head is hit off, or if the ball is hit off the toe side of the club head, the club will twist clockwise. That will put a counterclockwise twist on the golf ball, which will actually send it drawing. It can be quite chaotic. All you need to know is when the strike is not ideal, when it's not on the sweet spot, direction becomes much more random. So here's some slow motion visuals so you can understand. If the club head is swinging on the white arc here, that lines up with the golf ball center of mass, that's what we call a sweet spot strike. Now for players who are towing the ball, you know, hit, they hit out of the toe side of the club, that means the swing arc is on the red line, which is too close to their feet. And vice versa, if you swing on an arc that's too far away from your feet, you will hit more heel shots, or dare I say it, the dreaded shank shot, as we can see here. So controlling your swing arc is imperative if you're going to be a good striker of the golf ball. And we can see the heel and toe arcs there. Now how do you test? How do you know if you're doing this correctly? Well one of the ways that I found is a great way is to spray the club face with Dr. Scholl's foot spray or any athlete's foot spray. Now when you hit the shot it'll leave an imprint of where you've hit as shown. So the better striking rules so far hit the sweet spot. That's one thing. Lots of people know that. Ground contact is another thing. This is really where people go wrong or where the average golfer suffers the most. In order to understand ground contact, let's first take a look at the swing circle. So I've created some images here. This is me making a swing. Play it through a couple of times. Now here's a slow motion with the arc of the swing overlaid. You can see it's very circular in nature. Now here if we take a look at that swing circle and we zoom in on the bottom part of it, we call this part the low point. So before that point the club is traveling down, after that point the club is traveling upward. Now when we look at professional quality ground contact, what we see is the club hits the ball as it's traveling down. So we call that before low point. Now the ball goes up in the air because of the dynamic loft of the club. The ball will basically go up from the loft. After the ball is separated from the club face, we can't affect it anymore. And then a divot is taken, shallow, deep. So we can see here, the club is on the downward 
part of the arc when it hits the golf ball the lowest point of the swing is after and that's why with professional golfers the divot occurs after the golf ball so here we see this in real time with Rory McIlroy we see the club traveling down striking the ball the ball leaves the club face and then the turf is struck now this is where a lot of amateurs are the lowest point of their swing the black line is behind the golf ball from this position you're only ever going to get thin contact or fat contact the only time you'll be able to strike the ball well is if you're on a perfect lie or it's teed up typically if the low point is behind the ball you're going to get a lot of shots that look like this. Now controlling the low point of the swing is not the only thing we need for good quality ground strike. Here we see a low point that's in front of the ball and the ground contact is in the right place but if we drop deeper in the ground contact gets early. It becomes behind the golf ball or a fat shot and vice versa, raising the arc up also shifts where we contact the ground. Unless we don't contact the ground at all in the case of a thin shot as shown. So for better ball striking, you've got to hit the sweet spot, we've looked at that. We've got to contact the ground in the right place, which is ball first then turf or ball and turf together. And this is a combination of low point control and what we call arc height control. That's it. If you get those things, the sweet spot and the ground contact, you will hit flush shots. It's as simple as that. It's not to do with the backswing. It's not to do with where your hips are or anything like that. If you get that club impact in the ground in that way and hitting the sweet spot, you will achieve better results. So let's have a look at some of the benefits to striking the ball better. Better quality turf contact and face contact is going to be huge to your game. Striking the sweet spot more often is going to result in a tighter lateral dispersion through reducing that gear effect that we talked about. So side to side is going to be reduced, but more importantly you get a little bit more distance through better strikes, but the distance dispersion front to back becomes reduced and that will be huge to your game. It will result in lower scores guaranteed due to more greens in regulation being hit. This is exactly why I created the strike plan. It was my way of giving golfers all the valuable information they need to improve their face and ground contact to the level of the pros. We discuss the swing circle. We look in depth at where the low point needs to be for the irons and the driver in order to have success. Here we see the driver low point being in a different place to the irons and how to change that through specific techniques how to move your body to create power and consistent strikes like the pros. There's some pretty cool visuals in there to help you understand the ideas. I also developed many skill drills so you can improve your game using the latest motor learning science. Sounds fancy but these drills can be done at the range, they can be done at the course or even at home in your garage. I take you through specific lessons and we even analyze the techniques of the professionals to see what it is that they do different which gives them the success that they have. There are 17 different videos, 6 in-depth modules, almost 3 hours of content, all designed to get you striking the ball better. While the program is predominantly focused on contact, we take a look at how you can further improve distance by reducing what we call spin loft. Doing this via an increased angle of attack, we can create a higher launch angle, lower spin rates. This is the magic formula for distance. It's rooted in the laws of physics. It's the exact same way I gained 55 yards of carry on my driver and went from being a short hitting pro to hitting a respectable 295 yards and over 270 yards in the air. While people often think 55 yard gain is impossible, these Trackman numbers here show you exactly how I did it. It proves that a higher launch angle and lower spin can really send the ball out there without even having to swing faster. You can see that my club head speed is 102.5 and 101, so basically the same club head speed but 55 yards difference in the air. I even devote a whole module to something not commonly known, improving the hand path. By creating an upward hand path like the pros, we can shallow out and create a flat spot in the swing circle. 
It offers us more consistency in strikes and a bigger margin for error. It's the exact technique that the top guys use to make it look so easy. And doing the opposite is the exact reason amateurs make the game look so hard. You don't want to miss this. So to summarize this presentation, hitting more greens is key to scoring lower. We can achieve that by techniques such as our ability to strike the ground in the right place and to strike the sweet spot more often. And we can also do it via strategies such as aiming at the back of the green or just past the pin to allow for a buffer and aiming at the middle of the green instead of pin seeking. Look, I hope you've enjoyed and I know you will get something out of the information, even if it's just reconfirming what you already know you should be doing. If you're interested in really improving your strike quality and you want to take a look at the strike plan, click on the image link below and find out more about the program. You can also go to www.adamyounggolf.com and look for the strike plan in the menu. I've also attached links to the testimonials. You can read and you can see from real customers how much they're enjoying the program and how much they're benefiting.